How's it going guys? Coming at you with a review of the Bergara B14 bolt action rifle. Uh, this particular one is chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. When Bergara asked me to do a review for him, I specifically requested a 6.5 Creedmoor because I really wanted to play with the, with that cartridge, which I have not had the opportunity to do yet. And for those of you guys that know, I am a big fan of the 6.5 millimeter round. And so the, the Creedmoor was definitely one I wanted to play with and I'm really pleasantly surprised at the actual cartridge itself. Okay, so Bergara. I know a lot of you guys have never even heard the name Bergara, okay? That's because they're a relatively newer name uh, when it comes to rifles. Now, they've been producing uh, barrels for about 10 years. And what's interesting is a lot of you guys are probably shooting Bergara rifles or for Bergara barrels out of your AR-15 and don't even know it. Um, I don't really know all the particulars and who um, and what rifle barrels are being supplied by Bergara to what companies, uh, AR-15 companies. Um, they can't, they don't, they don't tell you because of contractual agreements, not disclosures, things like that. Um, but uh, they they supply barrels to a lot of your popular AR-15 brands out there. So a lot of you guys are probably already shooting Bergara barrels and don't even know it. Uh, but Bagar has been making um, rifles for quite some time, but they have really uh, broken into the marketplace on the bolt action arena with three different lines of, of rifles. This particular one is their B14, which is their entry level model. Okay, They also have a, a Premier line, which is their kind of mid range line, uh, which they, I believe, guarantee to be sub. Uh, guaranteed to be about a half minute accurate and then you have your custom line which is their higher end stuff which is pretty much just like customizing everything about the gun and that can run like in the five thousand dollar range something like that so i mean there's a really really high-end expensive ones there's the mid-range which i think are right around the twenty two hundred dollar mark or less um, and then you have your sub thousand dollar range which is your b14 so this is the point in the review where I want you to sit up and pay attention to what I'm about to say because this is probably one of the most important things that you're going to hear in this review and that is that Bergara guarantees sub minute accuracy out of all of their rifles. Okay now I believe the Premier line and the the custom line they guarantee sub uh, they guarantee 0.5 MOA accuracy and for those of you guys who don't know what MOA is it's one inch at 100 yards. So they guarantee that all the browns are going to go in within a one inch circle at 100 yards. Okay, that's pretty well the gold standard of accuracy. And Bergara guarantees that their rifles will shoot sub minute accurate with match grade factory ammo, such as this one. This particular one is the 140 grain ELD from Hornady. Okay, and it'll they guarantee that this will shoot sub minute or less than one inch groups at 100 yards with this rifle. That is great. So so moving along in the review, everything else is subject um, underneath that, that guarantee. Because really when it comes right down to it, what's the best, what is the role of a bolt action rifle? Okay, what is the role of it? Um, you know, I've heard people compare the bolt action rifle with the revolver, okay, saying that well, the revolver is is antiquated. It's um, you know it's slow. There's really not a need or a place for the revolver anymore because we have such good semi-automatic pistols. Okay, and I've heard them say the same thing about bolt guns. Well, they're slow. Um, they they just don't really. I mean, we have semi-autos that are that are sub-minute accurate. You know, we don't really need bolt-action guns anymore. Well, let me give you four points. Okay, four reasons why bolt-action guns are still relevant. Okay, number one is that you can shoot more powerful cartridges out of the bolt gun than you can out of most semi-automatics. I know there's exceptions to that. I know that there's semi-automatic uh, uh, 50 BMG uh, rifles, okay? I realize that. But when it comes down to it, in general, you can find more calibers, uh, more high-powered, like magnum calibers or high-powered cartridges being um, offered in bolt-action guns than any other uh, form of action. And the reason why that is is because the bolt gun, which is also a second point, the 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 action of a bolt gun is very simplistic and very rugged. Okay, very very robust, so it can handle higher pressures 
from your more powerful cartridges. So this shoots more powerful cartridges and it's also more, uh, more uh, of a strong and simple action. Okay, it's very simple. Which lends us to our third point, which is more, they tend to be a little bit more reliable than your semi-automatic counterparts. Granted, they're a lot slower, but they're a lot more reliable. And number four, I would say um, accuracy, okay? Inherently and intrinsically, the bolt action rifle is much more accurate than any other form of action like except for maybe like a break open or something like that which is also very simplistic because there's no moving parts and that's the thing about the the bolt gun is there's no moving parts during the phase of fire to interfere with accuracy whereas in whereas semi-automatics have to have a little looser tolerance or else they wouldn't be able to self-load okay and a bolt gun doesn't have to worry about that, okay? It, you can hand load a cartridge specifically and a lot more tuned to uh, a bolt gun than you can a semi-automatic. And so from, an, from a hand loading standpoint, accuracy in a bolt gun is by far greater than that of a semi-automatic. But also because of the simplistic, simplistic action with no moving parts, inherently and intrinsically a bolt gun is more accurate than a semi-automatic. So there are some points and reasons why the bolt gun really is still a very relevant um, form of firearm out there today. And Bergara is producing an excellent, excellent bolt gun. Okay, so let's get into a few things that I observed about the gun. Okay, now I can go through, bolt guns are very simple, like I said, and it's hard to do a full review on them and keep it interesting, right? Just because like how much you, how much do you really talk about the gun? I'm gonna leave a link in the description box down below so you guys can go down and look at all the specs, go down and look at all the calibers it's offered in, the different different uh, forms that it's offered in. Um, you can look at all that on their website. I'm gonna talk about some of my personal observations, okay? Some of my personal um, uh, uh, highlights of the actual gun itself. First off, the carry case that this thing comes in is fantastic, okay? It is probably the nicest carrying case that I've seen a firearm uh, factory rifle come in in a long time. It's like really nice. I mean, there's cloth interior, uh, there's compartments for different things. I mean, it's just really, really a very, very nice case. Okay, that's the first thing I observed because that was the first thing I looked at, right? So the carrying case is awesome. The next thing that I noticed about the rifle is that the fit and finish is beautiful, okay? I don't know about you guys, but there's just something about steel and wood, okay? There's just something that is just match made in heaven, steel and wood. That combination that's really, really awesome. And I know there's a lot of like synthetics out there that are just fantastic. I mean, I'm an AR-15 guy, I love tactical rifles, don't get me wrong, um, but there's just something that that you just come back to a little bit uh, when you when you have a beautiful wood stock. And really when it comes right down to it, when I, when I opened up the case and looked at this walnut stock, I thought, holy cow, this walnut stock is absolutely beautiful. The checkering is not hand done, but it's like, it's really, really nice. Um, you know, all the, all the, uh, the different, um, all the finish and everything, the way it's cut, all of that is just a fantastically beautiful stock. And I think that is one of the coolest things about this rifle is the fit and finish is amazing. Now I believe that the coating on the metal, okay, the coating on the barrel and the coating on the action is bluing. I'm not, I don't think it's nitriding. I don't think it's parkerizing. I think it's bluing, which is fine. I mean, um, you know, it's not the most robust coating out there, but uh, you know, it, it does fine. It's done fine for a hundred years, okay? So I believe it, I believe it's blued, okay? And um, it's just really nice. All the, all the edges are really, really well done. I mean, everything about this rifle um, just uh, oozes quality in manufacturing, okay? Now, the next thing I observed was the action. And the action on this rifle, let me see, make sure I've got it in, is very, very smooth. For a sub thousand dollar rifle, um, it's really, really nice, okay? It's a two lug system with a Seiko style extractor, okay, in their action. This particular action, the B14 action, is made in Spain, okay? Their premier line, I believe those actions are based off of a Remington action and they are produced here in the United States. This action here on the B14 is made in Spain. But it is, it's smooth guys. I mean, there's no drag. You know, you've got your little notch where you where you feel the, the uh, lugs engage on the inside of the bearing surfaces. 
but then it just closes with sheer fluidity. And that was the, the next thing I observed because I cocked the action and, uh, and I thought, wow, that thing is really, really smooth, really smooth, really nice, okay? And then I pulled the trigger. Now, sweeping over to the trigger, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna test the trigger for you guys with my, with my Wheeler pull gauge. This is probably one of the best things about this rifle is that the Bagara trigger. This is Bagara's trigger, okay? This is their trigger that they put, put on the rifle. Let's do a pull weight on it here for you so you guys can see it. Okay, right here we broke just under two and a half pounds. Okay, let's do it one more time. Set it back to zero. Okay, here we are, broke at like two and a quarter pounds, just over two pounds. That's pretty well where I observe this trigger at most of the time, is I observe it right at the two pound mark, okay? So very, very nice trigger, nice and light. I like about a two pound trigger. Anything more than that on a precision gun, like a long gun, like a, a bolt gun, I just think it, it interferes with your ability to be accurate with that rifle. And so two pounds really is a nice field weight trigger, okay? Some people might argue that that's too light for field use. I think it's perfect. <clears throat> my hunting rifle, okay, my custom 308 that I that I hunt with, has a trigger set at under one pound. Okay, and a lot of people think that's insane, but I think it's I think it's just fantastic. It takes really the interaction of the of the the shooter out of the rifle a lot more with that lighter weight trigger. I would not recommend a one pound trigger for most people. Okay, but in this case, um, but in my case, I like the one pound trigger. Two pounds is perfect. Here's the thing I've observed about this. I've put about 120 rounds through this rifle, okay? That's all I've, I've put through it. I paid for my own ammunition, guys, with this review. So you're looking at about 150 bucks that this review's cost me to do, okay? Yeah, they supplied the rifle to me, but I supplied all the ammunition. And and here we are, like, look at, look at the price. Uh, it doesn't have a price on it. Right here, that's 30 bucks a box, okay? I got this at Ready Gunner. Thanks to Ready Gunner for help for helping me hook me up with some 6.5 Creedmoor. They ordered this stuff in for me. Okay, so that's like 30 bucks a box. You know, here here it is, 31 dollars a box for the 140 grainers. It's expensive, and I paid for all the ammunition for it. So I put 120 rounds through it. Okay, that's all I put through this rifle. Uh, but what I noticed is during the shooting of this rifle, one round did I observe creep in this trigger. Okay, one round. I can literally consciously think. Wow, I felt just a tad bit of travel on that trigger that time. And that was the only time that I literally noticed that at all. This trigger breaks with almost zero creep and zero travel. It is crazy. You apply two pounds of trigger, two pounds to the trigger, and it breaks. It's not a, it's not a uh, like candy cane snap uh, trigger. It's more like a carrot break but it's a good carrot break. Like it's it's really, really nice. I've felt crisper triggers, but I have, but for a factory trigger, this is probably one of the best factory triggers that I've ever shot, okay? It's it's fantastic. I equate this with my buddy's Timney, okay? Now, my buddy has a Timney trigger that's set right at about a pound, a little over a pound and a half, maybe right at a pound and a half, something like that. And the break on his Timney trigger is almost identical to this one, okay? So you're getting pretty much with a with a sub thousand dollar rifle. I think this one MSRP is at nine forty five. Okay, as you see it, uh, without the without the scope, uh, you're getting a hundred and fifty dollar trigger with this with this rifle. So right out of the gate, you're getting a great great trigger uh, with the rifle. I would never trade that out. Okay, and that's one of the first things that I usually do on a bolt action gun is change out the trigger. Uh, put in a better trigger because that is really where you're interacting most with the with the rifle and when it comes to accuracy the trigger is huge huge and i wouldn't trade that out it's it's really really a great trigger so that's one of the biggest strong points on this rifle is is the trigger now we can go on and on and on about the different things different aspects of this rifle but let's talk about the accuracy okay i'm going to roll in some um some targets that i shot what we shot was with the supplied uh, uh zeiss uh scope and this is a four four to twelve power scope i really like a lot a higher magnification i feel like i shoot a little bit uh, better and a little more consistent with a higher magnification scope um so 
Um, I'm using a little bit of an excuse alert. You know, the 12 power uh, is a little bit weak for me um, when I'm shooting, trying to shoot really precisely. This is, however, a good piece of glass on top of this. This is a great hunting setup. As you see it right now, this is a fantastic hunting setup. Uh, for those of you guys that are looking to get into a, a nice hunting rifle that you don't have to, that you're going to be happy with, okay, and not going to want to get rid of like the next year, uh, the Bagara is really a great choice. Okay, so let's roll in some targets here. <clears throat> a couple of the things that I noticed about the, the Bagara, right, is that the more I shot it, the better it shot, okay, the more accurate it became, um, I think. But part of that is that, again, guys, with reviews like this, you're getting me along with the rifle, okay? Um, I tried to, um, you know, take some of that out by getting a really good stable rest, things like that, taking some of me out of it. But some of these things you're going to observe is me, okay? It's me and my, my lack of skill to some degree, okay? Here is the very first, um, here's the very first... Uh, target that we shot. This was the fouling shot. Okay, that was the very first uh, shot out of the rifle. And then I shot this this right here, which is pretty well like 0.6 inch group, something like that. Didn't measure that one. Um, here is the second one I shot. Okay, and that's right there. Those four shots right there are really, pretty much right in at an inch. Okay, but I had a flyer in that particular uh, group. So that's probably, you're looking at about two, two inch group with that. Okay, and then we shot this one with that American Eagle um, OTM, OTM, which is 140 grain, which is this bullet right here, okay? So it's just a uh, open tip match stuff, all right? And uh, that was a .824. I want you guys to pay attention to that number, right in the .8 inch range, because I really think that that's really where this rifle likes to sit, is that .8 inch, okay? And then we have um, this one here, okay? Now this one, I wrote on there problems with the sled, okay? Because I was shooting off a lead sled with this, and oh, with this whole target, and it was it kept shimmying back and forth, and I know that that's what that horizontal stringing is, okay? I know that was a lead sled. Uh, so that could have been the flyer issue with that as well there. But anyway, so there's our very first target we shot with it. Now, the next one here is at 100 yards. <coughs> I believe this was the same day, I want to say. It might not. I, I mean, literally, I've shot this five different occasions, so I don't know which targets go to which. Uh, but right here, look at this. That's the 120 grain Amax stuff. That's this round right here, okay? That's the 120 grain Amax. Right there, that's a, that's a sub half minute group right there. That's fantastic. Uh, and then we shot one, 1 1.1 inch group with that 120 grain Amax. There's uh, a two inch group with the 140 grain ELD, okay? which is this round right here with the darker tip on it. Okay, that's the, the darker tip, just so you guys have a, an idea. And then we shot um, with the ELDX, okay? So here's the ELDX, which is the Hunter, the Precision Hunter line from Hornady, their new stuff. Uh, 143 grain stuff, 0.8 inch right there. And then we got a 1.8 inch <laughs> right there. Again, this I think was the same day. Um, again, I was still having problems with that lead sled. If you look, we're getting horizontal with it, and I think that that's a lot of what what we're observing with that is that lead sled being kind of funky. Okay. Now the next target here. Okay, uh, I believe this was also the same day. Okay, these these first three. Um, after that, I got frustrated and just stopped shooting. <laughs> 120 grainers. That's bad. That's like a two and a half inch group or a two inch group. That's like a one and a half inch group. Uh, but then we shot a 0.77. Okay, that's crazy. And that's with the 120 grain Amax. And there's and then we shot a one and a quarter inch right there. So we're getting um, we're getting like inconsistent accuracy in the beginning of it. We're getting sub minute groups. We got a, like a half minute group there, and then we're getting like these crappy groups. So. It was definitely inconsistent. Um, part of that is probably, again, guys, probably me. Now, this target only has, I believe, one... Yeah, this one only has one group on it. And it is with this 140 grain uh, American Eagle stuff. And that's right at an inch. Okay? So that's a, that's a four-shot group, I believe. Four-shot. Yep. So right at an inch there. Uh, not bad. Not horrible. Okay? 
Okay, now, definitely a different day. Actually, yeah, this was a different day. Um, I was out hunt, uh, sighting my hunting rifle in um, for elk season, which which I didn't get an elk, but uh, check that out, guys. <laughs> it's a freaking awesome group. That's with my custom Remington 700 in 308 shooting that applied ballistics munitions. That's a freaking five-shot group with that stuff, man. Ah, I love it. Applied applied ballistics munitions, abmammo.com. Take, take a look at them. Fantastic ammunition. There's a group of that. There's a group of that. There's a group. There's a group. I mean, we're all we're all like three quarter minute with with that ABM stuff. Okay, but I want to show you this one. This was a 120 grain Amax group, and it's uh, right at an inch. Okay, so right at an inch with the Bagara. I just threw the Bagara on the the uh, sandbag right there and shot it while I was uh, sighting my hunting rifle in. Okay. Um, okay, so here, here, here's some some more groups. Okay, this is definitely a different day. I'm not sure exactly. I didn't annotate. Uh, usually, I annotate like descriptions of the days, and I didn't do it on this one. Um, 0.66 with that 140 grain ELD. Great group. Really nice. Um, here's a 0.814 with the ELDX. Okay, um, and then look at that, dude. 0.49. Point yeah, 0.4 inch group, pretty much, with the 140 grain ELDs, okay? And then we get this. Here's a two inch group with the 120 grain Amaxes. I'm like, what the heck? Like, question mark, question mark. And then this one's like a 2.4 inch, question mark, question mark, what the heck? No idea. No idea why it shot like that. I mean, here we got 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 0.4, okay? And then we shot these two. Like, what the heck, you know? So that's probably me again. I mean, okay. And then, and then these were these two targets were two separate days. The last two times I shot the rifle, uh, right here. This was a breezy day. I think I remember it being like 10 to 15 mile an hour gusty breezes. Okay, so it's a breezy day at 100 yards. ELDX 0.9 inch. Okay, 0.891. Here's we got a, a one and a quarter with the 140 grainers. Look at that right there, 0. 0.5 with the 143 grain ELDs. Fantastic. And then again, another one and a quarter with those 140 grain ELDs. All right. So that's pretty good. Sub minute, sub minute, uh, one and a quarter, one and a quarter. I mean, that's, I would say that's perfectly MOA or if not better, if you average those out, you know? So, and then here is our last day. <clears throat> Last day shooting the, the Bagara. This is the last one I shot. Clear, calm day at 100 yards with the Bagara. Okay. 140 grain ELD, 0.875 inch. Right there, ELDX, 843 inch. Uh, 143 grain ELDX, 0.834 inch group. Um, ELDX right there, 1.14. Okay, and then look at this last one, 0.646, <laughs> that was awesome. Okay, so really guys, as the gun got seasoned, it's, it tended to, to shoot better, okay? And, and again, the clear calm day at 100 yards, 0.8 inch, 0.8 inch, 0.8 inch, 0.6 inch, 1.1. In, so if we, if we just observe from what we're seeing right here, we're looking at a pretty much an average of 0.8 inch group, okay? So this, so what I'm calling this this gun is a 0.8 inch accurate rifle, okay? That is sub minute, all right? That's fantastic. If I paid $945, if I paid full MSRP for this rifle and it shot 0.8 inches pretty dang consistently with match grade ammo such as this precision hunter stuff from Hornady which is what I'd be hunting with if this were me in this rifle with a 6.5 Creedmoor I'm shooting this 143 grain stuff at at anything from elk to black bear that such and such with a ballistic coefficient a G1 of 0.625 that's phenomenal guys phenomenal if I paid $945 for this rifle, and it shot 0.8 inch groups accurately, I would be happy as a clam, okay? Absolutely. I would have zero issues with this. I would keep this rifle if I could, all right? So this rifle, as you see it right here in front of you, I have to send back to Bergara, uh, darn it. But 
I would be happy, happy, happy to pay a thousand dollars for this rifle and it be this accurate. Okay, that's saying a lot. I've spent three, almost four times that on my custom Remington 700. Granted, that gun shoots anything pretty much guaranteed at a half minute groups. But as you can see guys, the difference between something that's guaranteed to be half minute and something that's guaranteed to be sub one minute, okay, but pretty much 0.8 inch is what I'm observing it to be. The difference is that is several is, is a couple thousand bucks. Okay, you're looking at double the price for just a tad bit more accuracy uh, from the Bagara line. Guys, take a look at the B14. All right, take a look at it. For those of you guys that are hand loading, expect even better than 0.8 inch. Okay, even better than 0.8 inch. But I'm calling this a 0.8 inch accurate rifle at thousand dollars or less with this quality. This uh, this is the timber version, okay, which the, has the Monte Carlo stock, beautiful stock. As it weighs right here in front of you with the Zeiss 4, 4 to 12 power, it weighs point, uh, it weighs uh, 8.9 pounds, okay. So this would be a great rifle to hump on pretty much any of your hunts. You know, the 22 inch long barrel makes it nice, gives it a nice swing uh, swing length. Um, just everything about this rifle is just really, really nice quality, guys. And I'm really, really happy with it. You'll probably end up seeing me with a Bergara someday. Uh, Bergara, if you're watching, you guys feel free to send me a rifle. I'll put it in my hunt videos. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely impressed with it. So, guys, Bergara is good to go. Barrels, actions, rifles. One thing I want to add here at the end, okay, is those for those of you guys that don't know Bergara barrels, okay, Ed Schillen... Uh, teamed up with Bergara to produce a barrel uh, at production rates, okay, so fast production, but do it at a at a custom level of accuracy. And so Ed Sheelan uh, uh, teamed up with Bergara. Bergara brought forth uh, CNC um, modern day milling machines and modern day technology with Ed Sheelan's um, production plan. They brought together and are producing barrels that are super accurate at a at a larger production rate. Um, they're not using the old World War II style machining um, to produce their barrels, which is very slow and time consuming. They're using they're using modern tech to do it, and they're doing it at a very fast rate. And if you guys know who Ed Sheelan is, okay, um, go. I mean, Ed Sheelan is a world renowned barrel maker, and being that he's teamed up and putting his name on Bergara uh, by doing so uh, tells you a lot about the quality that Bergara is putting out. So, but guys, to a thousand dollar rifle that's uh, that's guaranteed sub minute. Good to go. I really, really think you guys need to take a look at them. There's going to be a link in the description box to their to their website. Go and check it out. Um, you get all the you can get all the details and specs on the rifle down in that in that there. If you guys have any questions or comments about anything you've seen in the video, hit me up in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. I really appreciate it. If you guys are not following me on Instagram, you need to follow me on Instagram at DocTacDad there on Instagram. Hit me up there. Uh, I really appreciate you guys liking, subscribing, and commenting. I really, really appreciate it. Thanks guys so much for watching, and we'll catch you guys in the next video. See ya.